Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. Most Hope Deliverance Center, Team Jesus. I uh, just want to invite you, April 18th, uh, we got a seminar, it's free. Uh, share this with someone. Uh, for whatever reason, Facebook's been uh, removing a lot of our content. Um, so, it, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, we're living in the last days, and the Bible says, I was just reading, that blessed are those who are persecuted uh, for righteousness' sake. That means that um, I'm blessed, you know. It means obviously I'm speaking the truth and sharing the truth, and sometimes if the truth offends, it offends. Uh, but how are we supposed to speak the truth and love? So, you know, I just want to invite you, April 18th, 6 p.m., it's on a Sunday, Most Hope Deliverance Center. We share with Walnut Hills Baptist Church, 2386 Kemper Lane, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. It's in Walnut Hills, 45206, I believe. If you have any questions, you can uh, give me a call, text me, email me, teamjesusmosthope20 at gmail.com. Or just follow our page, Team Jesus Most Hope. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, because again, like I said, a lot of the content we put up, it gets taken down. You can always go back and find it on YouTube. Uh, however, they do remove some of the content as well. Uh, what we're going to be talking about on the 18th is uh, overcoming uh, the pyramid of destruction, overcoming the demon's pyramid of destruction. Uh, we're just going to give you a um, uh, generalization of uh, the spirit world how it works, uh, how the enemy uses rejection, rebellion, fear, and lust to target uh, and uh, steal, kill, and destroy your life. So I hope to hear from you. hope to see you there. Today we're going to pick up on Galatians chapter 3. And then uh, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for watching over us. I pray for my brothers and sisters, all those who are listening to this message. I ask that you bless them, Lord. I ask that you speak to their hearts and minds. I ask that you just minister to them, Lord, and just love them. We thank you for them, Lord, and we just praise your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. I also want to invite you to service, uh, same place, if anybody ever wants to come to service. It is from every Sunday from 11 to 12. I do preach or teach, rather. I'm not much of a preacher. I'm more of a teacher. Uh, I believe in salvation, deliverance, and healing uh, through the power of the Holy Ghost. So if uh, you know someone that's oppressed, afflicted, needs saving, uh, come check us out of service. And then um, every Sunday, except for the second Sunday of the month, uh, I teach. So uh, if it's the second Sunday, I'm generally not here. All right, so Galatians chapter 3. Uh, we're here, we're talking again. We left off, so go back and check out chapter 1 and 2. Here we go. He says, Oh, foolish Galatians. Who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? The word foolish there is a person lacking good sense. So he's saying, hey, listen, man, you're simple-minded. Uh, you know, hey, you idiots, what's going on? Uh, you're not lacking good sense. You're not using good judgment. I'm sorry, you are lacking good sense, and you're not using good judgment. Who hath bewitched you? The word bewitch means cast a spell. Uh, it's to captivate or it's to hypnotize. And then we're going to read on here a little bit more, and we're going to understand why he's saying that. So he's saying, hey, look, man, you simple-minded people, uh, you heard the truth. What happened? What happened here? Uh, Jesus Christ had evidently been set forth, crucified among you. In other words, they heard the truth, they knew the truth, and they seen the fruit that Paul was producing. It was mapped out for them in such a way that they ha could not deny the truth, uh, and they felt the move of the Spirit. So, you know, he's saying, hey, look, man, uh, did somebody cast a spell on you? Did somebody captivate you? Are you hypnotized? Uh, what happened? Uh, and generally, what I like to think happens, people hear the truth, uh, but then when trials and tribulations hit because they haven't uh, been taught correctly, they fold up like a cheap tent. There's no one mentoring to them. They haven't been through deliverance. Uh, so just because you know the truth, you see the truth, you've been set free from the truth, but you're still infected, and then um, a trial comes, you fold up like a cheap tent, or uh, because you're infected with religious spirits or this or that, uh, you get stuck 
uh, thinking that you're earning your salvation, even though it's by grace you're saved through faith. That's not of your works, lest any man boast. Uh, it's still captivating, and it's almost hypnotic, knowing that you think you're earning some sort of blessing from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And you can't earn anything. The only thing we're to do or exercise our authority is we're to be doers of the word and not just hearers. Otherwise, we're deceiving ourselves. And we are to exercise our authority over the demons or any type of spiritual infection we have within our bodies and our lives. And then we're to fight this good fight of faith. So, and if you uh, are infected or have a mystery illness, uh, arthritis, uh, you know, something, uh, they don't have a, a reason as to mental illness or this or that, uh, and there's a spiritual root to it, you got to exercise your authority when that demon's usually cast it out, that illness uh, usually goes with it. However, once that's done, you have to renew your mind each and every day. So he goes on to say here, This only what I learn of you, received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. So hey, you receive the Spirit by faith. Why now do you think that, uh, you know, you, you were saved by the works of the law? In other words, the law is an instruction. It's something that you're to obey. And the law was used as a training wheel to drive us to Christ because no man can keep the law. Because if you mess up on one part of the law, uh, you mess up on it all. So he says, are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? So again, they knew they began in the spirit, but now they're caught up in their flesh. And the flesh is just a, it's a nasty thing. I mean, that's why the Bible says, for those that live in the flesh won't inherit the kingdom of God because you're doing such, such things, which we'll get into, I believe, in chapter 5. But those who walk in the Spirit each and every day, they're doers of the Word and not just hearers. Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? In other words, hey, listen, you know, the trials and tribulations, the growth, uh, the things that you had turned from, you repented and you accept Christ, you was born again of the Spirit, you received the Spirit by faith, you know, did you suffer these things in vain? Was it all for nothing? He said, he therefore that ministers to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So again, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And those that come to him must come to him by faith. And the Bible goes on to talk about how like Abraham traveled, I think it's Genesis 15 or something, I could be off, but uh, traveled into a land by faith. He didn't know where he was going, but by faith he went. And then he offered up his firstborn son. By faith, he believed that God would provide for him, and he did. And by faith, Noah will build an ark. And we could go on and on and on. Read Hebrews chapter 11. My point is, though, is that when you come to God, you've got to come to him by faith. And he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So it isn't something that you're doing or earning when you're going for deliverance or healing. You're stepping forward in your faith. You know, God isn't an ATM. You're not coming to him just to get a quick fix because I trust me. You didn't get in this way overnight. Uh, you're not going to get out of it overnight. There generally is no quick fix. You're going to have to fight. You're going to have to put some work in. You're going to have to press towards that mark, especially if you're seeking some, you know, you, you, you was living any type of life like me. You're just a poster child for demon collection. That's just the reality of it. So he says here, even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. God told Abraham, hey, uh, I'll bless you and give you as the children as, as the sand of the sea, the number of the stars. In other words, you won't be able to count at all. Um, so all those who come to Christ are underneath that lineage there are children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify, declare right with God by God through faith in Jesus Christ and him crucified for a sinful humanity, the heathen through faith, I just said that, preached or proclaim before the gospel the glorious good news of Jesus Christ unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So again, all nations shall be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ through the lineage of Abraham on down. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Why? Because again, Abraham was accounted unto him for righteousness by faith, and we too must believe that he is. We come to him by faith. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be delivered. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. The word faith is defined as uh, a firm belief, uh, a firm belief in something or someone. Um, that's what Webster's defined it as. The Bible defines it as faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So it's the substance, the conviction of what you hope for, and the evidence, meaning uh, you know it's not there, but you hope for it, and you believe it, and something's bearing witness to it. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is every one that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do so. So again, you're trying to live under the law. Uh, you think you're earning your salvation. You're cursed. Uh, and if you go back and you read the Old Testament, uh, you know, the, the law was used as an instruction, as a training wheel to drive us to Christ, to let us know that we needed a Savior, but without the law, we didn't even know what sin really was. And I, I forget where it is. I think it's in Matthew, but he says that Christ, or John maybe, yeah, I think it's John, that Christ came and he exposed the world. He removed their cloak, their covering uh, that they were covered up with trying to cover their sin. He exposed sin. And it isn't that we're under, you know, Jesus didn't do away with the old law. He actually came and added to the law. So we're now living in the law of love, but we also are to follow all the instructions in the Bible. That doesn't mean our, that's how we earn our salvation, though. Salvation is a freely given gift to all those who believe. So, cursed is everyone that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them, but that no man is justified, declared right with God by God, by the law, by the instructions in the sight of God. It is evident the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. So if you get caught up in the law, uh, you're living under the law. And that's actually living in bondage. Uh, generally, people that are living that way have religious demons. Uh, they become nitpicking. Uh, and they think that they're really doing something when they're really doing nothing, uh, but just continuing to live in doubt and unbelief. He said, Christ had redeemed us, had bought us back from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So if you've got some uh, uh, witchcraft up in your family tree, you're living under a curse. If you don't know what curses are, um, uh, basically, I encourage you to go back and read the book of Deuteronomy. I believe it might be chapter 18 or 27. I could be off, but I know it's somewhere in there. And um, if, if you're living in that and you've done something such as witchcraft, sorcery, divination, worshipped other gods, uh, you've got a curse on you. You was born under a bastard curse, meaning you weren't married, you was fornicating, curse. Uh, so, you know, these are things that you need to understand. Yes, Deuteronomy uh, 27 is one. Yes, Deuteronomy 28. I'm sorry, 28, 27, 28. I would recommend reading all that in Deuteronomy. So, uh, you know, you put a curse on you, and the Bible says that God visits our iniquities under the third and fourth generation. So if great-grandpa was a mason, mama was reading horoscopes, palm reading, uh, you know, they're participating in witchcraft, sorcery, divination, meditation, yoga, thing, get, trying to get answers in the spirit world, uh, not going through the Holy Ghost, uh, then they're putting a curse on your life. Even though you came down the family tree, we see this in a lot of people that are diagnosed with uh, MS, autism, uh, disease, and things like that, severe mental illnesses. Generally, these are results of something nasty being up the family tree. However, you can be healed and delivered of these things, schizophrenia, uh, bipolar, all this stuff. So, um, you know, and again, it says here that Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law. And actually, I can't, I might misquote this, but I believe a curse uh, is defined or tells us that there's a specific group of, it, it calls it deities, but it's demons that are assigned to you uh, to uh, wreak havoc, so to speak, in your life. So basically, when you do something and you open up the door, you, you astro travel, uh, you fornicate, uh, you, you know, you, you pick up a spirit spouse. Uh, you pick up sexual transmitted demons, you get engaged in witchcraft, Ouija board, playing Bloody Mary, light as a feather, you're thinking it's funny, you're picking up a curse, 
Uh, you're opening the door and giving the demons legal grounds to come in and follow you around and target your children and wreak havoc into your life. So you need to repent. You need to repent and turn from your wicked ways. Cry out to God. Confess it as sin. Renounce it and bind it up and cast it out in the name of Jesus. As Jesus became a curse for us so we could be set free from the curse of the law, which again, read Deuteronomy 27 and 28, you'll understand a little bit more. That the blessing of Abraham might come on to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Again, when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're born again of the Spirit, and you're sealed with His Spirit until the day of redemption. That's being born again, and you want to be baptized or immersed in that Spirit you need to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Spirit dwells within you, and now you're wanting to be baptized in it. You want His gifts uh, to manifest outwardly, such as the speaking or praying in tongues, uh, which is uh, every believer's spiritual communication, direct link between the Spirit and the Father. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet it be confirmed no man disannulleth or added thereto. So again, no man adds or takes away. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He said, Not, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Again, so it's not multiple ways to the Father. There's not multiple ways to the kingdom of heaven. There's not multiple ways to salvation. You can't get there by washing Buddha, worshiping Islam, uh, spiritualism, Mormonism. Uh, you can't get there by that. You just can't do it. You're going to die and go to hell. You're in error. It's only the one seed, one way to the Father. That's through faith in Jesus Christ and Him crucified for a sinful humanity. He says here, And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. So again, we inherit the we you don't you don't get uh, salvation through the inheritance of the law by maintaining your works of righteousness, but your salvation comes by grace through faith in Jesus Christ and His finished work on the cross. Ephesians chapter two verse eight and nine confirms that. And I also recommend reading Romans chapter four verse fourteen. So now again, though we want to be doers of the word and not just hearers, so we don't have. Uh, uh, a free will to go out and sin. We still want to, the Bible says, if you love me, you'll obey me. So you want to learn what God's commandments are. You want to be disciplined. You want to be obedient. He says here, Wherefore then serveth the law it was added because of our transgressions. It wants to expose our transgressions till the seed should come whom the promise was made. Talking about Jesus Christ. And it was ordained by angels, appointed by angels in the hand of a mediator, now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. So, so to speak, Jesus Christ is our mediator. Uh, when we do something wrong and God is ready to, to come down on a hammer, if you accepted Christ, he says, hey, look, they're covered in my blood. Uh, he's in, in between for us. He's mediating for us. And also the angels did come down and they told Joseph and Mary, hey, listen, you're going to bore, bore a son. Is the law then against the promise of God? God forbid. For if there has been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promises by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Again, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So, uh, what we see here is because of Adam, the biggest mass murder in human history. We were all born under sin to sin. We all inherited that. That was the curse, as I said. Uh, it follows down the family trees. Uh, you're just a dead man walking until you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Once you do get saved, uh, it's important that you uh, do not be foolish like the Galatians and allow something to bewitch you or captivate you, hypnotize you. Or and yet you don't compromise because you're lacking good sense or good judgment. And again, this is why you have to study to show yourself approved and be a workman, rightly dividing the word of truth. You got to really get into this. You got to put on your armor of God and you got to fight the good fight of faith. You got to lay hold to eternal life. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up under the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. 
Wherefore, this is confirmation of what I just said, the law was our schoolmaster, our training wheel, to bring us unto Christ, the anointed one of God, who shall save his people from their sins, that we might be justified, that we might, so it's not a guarantee, but if you accept Christ, you become a doer of the word, you press towards that mark, you, you obey him, you exercise your authority over sin, death, hell, and the grave, you get delivered you, in, in the name of Jesus, uh, you will be justified, declared right with God by God through your firm belief and assurance in his finished work on the cross. But after that, faith has come. We are no longer under a schoolmaster. So when we accept Christ, we know that, again, we need a Savior. We've repented. We've turned from our wicked ways. And now it's time to really get into the book, to get into the instruction manual, uh, and, and stop doing wrong and learn to do right. Why? Because ye are the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus. For as many as you have been baptized, immersed into Christ, have put on Christ. Water baptism means nothing. A lot of people will disagree with me on that. Uh, however, you can go down a dry center and come up a wet one. So the word baptized means to immerse. So just because you was baptized doesn't mean you was saved. Again, true repentance and godly sorrow. Uh, will result in a difference of an outward action, a manifestation from what's taking place within your life, the remodeling process. If you find yourself being enticed and tormented to keep doing wrong, chances are you got a demon. It might be masturbation. It might be porn. It might be lust. It might be adultery. Uh, and if that's the case, then you need to repent. You need to renounce it. You need to stop doing it. And you need to cry out to God and seek deliverance. You need to bind it up, cast it out through the authority of the Word of God. Mark 16, 17, and 18. Mark chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. And I believe it's Luke chapter 10, uh, verses, I think, 18 and 19. Let me just double check real quick. I don't want to give you guys any... Uh, I'll miss Matthew, Mark, Luke, misquoted scripture here. Here we go, chapter 10, yeah, verses 18 and 19, and then um, Isaiah 54, 17, Isaiah 55, 11, read Isaiah 53, and uh, Luke 4, 18, and then bind it up, exercise your authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, he says here, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye all are one in Christ Jesus. In other words, it don't matter, man. It don't matter who you are, what you are, where you're from. If you've cried out to the Lord, you're part of one body working together for one purpose. Uh, and if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. As I said, that confirms, that's the word of God. Everything I shared with you confirms what I had shared with you. Again, don't ever take Brother Josh's word for it. Get in and read the word. The word will always confirm what's been stated. And make sure... That it's not twisted, because the angel Satan will transform himself into an angel of light, and he will twist or misquote one thing, and that one thing will put you in error. So it's very important. That's why the Bible says we should not take away or add to the Word of God. We can't twist it uh, to fit our selfish desires of what we're looking for, uh, because in that case, you're living in a do what thy world will mode, uh, and you're living in Satanism. It's just that serious. So again, we are all one in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter you're white, black, Asian. It doesn't matter if you've converted from uh, Islam. Um, it, does, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you came over from Mormonism, uh, SRA, Satanic Rituals. Uh, if you was a part of SRA, Satanic Ritual Abuse, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, ma it doesn't matter. You've, you've cried out to the Lord, you've accepted Him, you've repented, you've confessed Him as your Lord and Savior, and then now uh, you've turned from your wicked ways and you're pressing towards that mark as your Lord and Savior, you're one in Christ Jesus. There's no difference between you or me or family. You know, you're, we're all part of one body. Um, you know, and then, of course, if you're engaged in those things, you need to go through deliverance. You need to go through deliverance. You've probably got... You know, if you find yourself with negative thoughts, my brother uh, Mike just put up a video uh, about a negative thought disorder, and I thought about it, and it's very uh, accurate because these demons will come in, they'll infect your brain, uh, whether it's in you or around you, and they'll put negative thoughts in you, and eventually you've acted and thought negatives for so long 
that it just comes naturally to you like a watch running without a battery. So, um, you know, and those are generally signs and red flags that you got spirits, that you got demons. So uh, remember, God isn't going to give you a negative thought uh, or bewitch you, uh, captivate you or hypnotize you uh, to uh, be pushed towards the works for salvation. There's not going to be any condemnation, guilt uh, to those that are in Christ Jesus. They know that their sins have been forgiven. Uh, however, there will be conviction uh, if you continue to do wrong. Uh, and that's why it's important that you stop doing wrong and learn to do right. We're going to catch up on Chapter 4 next week. Appreciate you guys' time. Uh, subscribe to us on, uh, well, this will be on YouTube. So subscribe to us, friend us. If you got any questions, email me, Team Jesus Most Hope. 20 at gmail.com. If you need a miracle list, which is a step-by-step -step, uh, kind of instruction that will walk you through self-deliverance, uh, please shoot me an email. Uh, I'll send you one. Shoot me a text. I'll get it to you. If you have any questions, uh, reach out to us. We love you. Uh, let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for this time. I thank you for these brothers and sisters. I thank you for the lost souls of the world. I thank you for the heathen. I ask that you bless them, Lord. I ask that you be with them. And Lord, I just ask that you bring them all to a place of repentance. Give them the gift of hate, to hate the things that you hate. The gift of love, to love the things that you love. We pray for the gift of godly sorrow, that they may repent and turn from their wicked ways. Lord Jesus, help us to not be foolish, and help us not to be bewitched uh, by the ways and cares and things of this world, because they can be hypnotizing and captivating. Lord, we pray that we can be doers of the word and not just hearers, and we ask for you to send someone to us this week that we can share and minister the life-saving message of salvation and deliverance to, and watch you heal their broken heart. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. All right, my brothers and sisters, thanks for your time.